Hi children, praise God and welcome to today's lesson. I hope that you've had a very wonderful and very blessed week that has passed and welcome to our lesson for today. My name is Teacher Michelle and we are going to start with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you today. We thank you for you are our Father and we thank you for what we are going to learn today, Jehovah. We pray that you may understand, Lord, what you are about to teach us, Lord, when we put it in our hearts, Jehovah, and may we also apply it in our day-to-day -day lives, Jesus. We come before you and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today's topic is God has given us free will to choose right and wrong. I'm going to repeat that. God has given us the free will to choose right and wrong. What is free will? Free will is basically freedom. God has given us the freedom to choose what we do, what we see, what we eat. So, in that, in that same way, God has also given us the freedom to choose what is right and what is wrong. And we are going to see one good example of someone who was given the choice to choose what is right and what is wrong from the story, from the parable of the prodigal son. So, when Jesus was preaching, he used to go around with his disciples and he had a way of teaching and one of, he had different ways of teaching and one of those ways that he used to teach was through stories and these stories we call them parables and today the story we are going to talk about is the story of the prodigal son. So there was a man and this man he had two sons. So one day the younger one went to the father and said, Father, I want you to divide what you, what belongs to me. So it's the same way like the way a parent can leave something for his children. Like let's say if it's, these people had maybe land or cows or goats and he had two sons. So he will maybe divide them equally. Like let's say this guy had, let's say two acres and maybe 10 goats. So one son will be given like one acre and five goats and the other one will be given like the other acre and five goods. That's like the same concept. So this younger son he went to the, the father. Come and be a mimi, whatever you had whatever you had planned to be mine, I want you to give it to me. So the father said, Okay, Akaenda, he divided the the wealth he had. I think it was land, maybe there was land with maybe plants like maize or something and animals like cows and camels so he divided and the younger son took his share so after a few days the younger son decided he's going to go so he took everything he gathered his belongings he gathered all the wealth maybe if, if there were things he couldn't carry labda liuza so he took everything and decided he's going to go to a country far far away so and all that he had gotten from the father Akaenda to a country. So with that, he went, he squandered the money. So he went partying. He was, maybe in this era, he went and bought cars. Maybe that time they had chariots. He went and bought chariots and horses. And then he just had fun with all the money that he had gotten from his father. So of course, that wouldn't last long. He went, he had fun, he was fun. Then it reaches a point the amount that he had because it was just a, it was just an amount and if you just go and spend it and spend it and spend it it Africa point all that wealth will be drained so there was a time where it reached a point where he had spent all his money and all his wealth so he didn't have anything and by bad luck or what that country experienced famine so famine is i think famine is the same as drought it's where like there's no rain and it's very dry which means there are no plants growing and if there are not plants growing there's no food for for the people to eat and also for the animals to eat so if considering this person had spent everything of course it was very difficult it was a very difficult time for him because he didn't have money and now there is drought which makes things even harder because in some cases at a prices of things go up because there is there is very few there's a there's very little food so 
uh, he went and he went to a citizen of that country that country he had gone to and this person had pigs so he offered him to go like work go work uh, like to work for him and take care of his pigs so he went so um, this this younger son he was taking care of the pigs and that time there was no food which means even his employer did not give him food so the only option that he had was to eat food that the food that the same food that the pigs were being given so this is someone who came from his father's house where he had plenty he had so much he never lacked anything and he decided you know what i want to go and i want to go and have fun or i want to go and live my life but then he alitumia to everything so all his money got exhausted he didn't have any more money and now he's living with pigs he doesn't even have food he's eating the same food that the pigs are eating and i don't know if some of you have seen how pigs live but it's not very nice and most pigs was in a pikiwa like leftovers all those the like the the meats from the butchery we mean leftovers maybe the leftover food from hotels and maybe beans and maize just it's just disgusting things so they are cooked together and they're given to the pigs so i don't think that is even something you would enjoy eating and this is what this young son had this is what this young son was eating and so in this story the father the father represents the father the father of the two sons represents god where god is our father right and god gives us free will the same way this father gave his child free will and accepted any decision that this child was making but it is up to this child to decide what is right and what is wrong because you're going to always have the freedom to do what is right and what is wrong and it brings us to a memory verse a memory verse from today comes from proverbs chapter 10 verse 28 and it says the prospect of the righteous is joy but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing so in this in our story the younger son the younger son was more or less wicked wicked is someone who who does bad things so uh, the younger son decided to do something that was not right. He squandered his father's money and everything that he had been given, but it lasted for a very short time. Because yes, he enjoyed, but it was for a very short time. And at the end, he decided to go back home to his father. So, when things were so hard for him he decided to go back home and when he went back home his father accepted him with open arms and even had a party for him but he found his brother and his brother had done what was right he had stayed with his father he did not uh, he wasn't wicked to go and squander the money that he had the inheritance that he had been given by his his father and him he lived a good life the older brother he lived a good life because he didn't lack anything. In his father's house, he had everything. He had food, he had shelter. Whereas the one who left, he did not have any food. He was eating with pigs and he did not have shelter. So when you weigh these two things, it shows that happiness, the happiness for someone who is wicked, it lasts for a very, very short time. But the righteous people, their prospect is joy. Any, when you're a good child, when you're obedient, you will have joy and good things following you. But when you decide to be wicked, so many things might go wrong for, for you. So I think that a way that we can ap apply this, this story in our day-to-day -day lives is like our parents. Our parents give us free will. Like your parents may be an atukanga and in the job and at home, you're left with your phone. You're left with your siblings, with your TV, and maybe your parents alikupea like some house chores. Maybe you are to wash the dishes or maybe take care of your siblings. But umzazi wako akitoka nje amekupea the free will. Amekupea your option. That where he's told you or your mom amekwambia you're supposed to do this. And where when do you have free will ya kuchuse kautafanya ama hautafanya and maybe you were told to do a house show but you decided to watch tv but you will watch tv for a short time and you will enjoy watching tv yes but maybe your parents akirudi nyumbani 
atakuwa angry because you did something wrong or you didn't do what they had said but if you had actually been obedient and did your house chores at the end of the day when your parent comes back home atafurahi for what you have done and that you are an obedient child so children we need to be obedient okay when right now we're at home we need to be obedient we need to follow what our parents are telling us and do it faithfully and do it well also we learn not to admire the wicked you know maybe when this younger brother was living you would admire he's living the good life he's enjoying everything but at the end of it that happiness was so short lived because it wasn't right it was wicked okay so happiness for the wicked is very short lived and also we should not admire the wicked yes it might look like your friends who are playing outside and they're not listening to their parents they're having fun more than you but at the end of the day that happiness is short lived and you're going to feel bad about it at the end of the day okay so children i hope that this week we are going to be obedient we are going to not ad- we are going to not admire the wicked because we know their happiness is very short lived and we are going to aspire to be righteous because a uh, bible verse from today is telling us that the prospect of the righteous is joy and we all want joy in our lives so i will read the memory verse for like one last time proverbs 10:28 it says the prospect of the righteous is joy but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing hi i hope you have learned so much i hope you you have really enjoyed this lesson and i hope that we're going to see each other next sunday and let us pray dear lord we thank you for you our father we thank you for you provide for us everything lord and that you give us the freedom to choose what is right and wrong lord may you guide us may you guide our hearts that whatever you ch- we choose jehovah will be right and will be pleasing to you that it may bring joy to us and the people we love and our parents in jesus name we pray amen bye bye Good morning, boys and girls. Once again, we welcome you to our lesson for today. My name is Teacher George. I'm born again. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Uh, before we proceed, let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and mercy. We love you because you have allowed us to see another new day. We pray that your presence will be with us throughout this day and especially as we go through this lesson may you give us minds that we will understand you so that the word that we learn today may be useful to us in this life in Jesus name we pray amen now children our lesson today is entitled prosperity of the wicked I know those are difficult words, <clears throat> but prosperity simply means success or well-being. And the wicked are those people who do bad things, who do not do what God wants us to do. And the main thing we want to learn today is that God has made us with a mind which is capable of making decisions when god created man in the garden of eden he gave adam and eve instructions and the main reason why god created man was that he wanted to have a fellowship with man he wanted to live in harmony with man so that <clears throat> man can worship god and man can prosper under god that's why god made a beautiful place called the garden of eden but after god had created man and had given them instructions they decided not to follow those instructions they decided because god made us in his image which means we are able to make decisions we are able to decide to do whether to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing that's how god has made us and our bible story today comes from the book of luke chapter 
starting from verse 11. <clears throat> this is a story we all know, which talks about the prodigal son. This man had two sons, and the younger son decided that he didn't want to stay with the father anymore. He wanted to live by himself, he wanted to do his own things, so he asked his father to give him his share of the wealth. So you see, he made a decision not to stay with the father, to go and live on his own. He made a decision to ask for his share of the wealth. And the father gave him his share of the wealth. But the sad thing is that when he was given this money, instead of using it wisely, he decided to go and live what the Bible says, wild living. That is living a life of drunkenness, sexual immorality, and all those bad things. And after a short time, the money got finished. And he started suffering. So what do we learn from this, boys and girls? Like I've told you before, God has given us a free will to choose. And we know what is right and we know what is wrong. And we are free to choose. So this young man decided, I will not stay with my father. I want to go away from my father. He made a choice. <clears throat> he decided the kind of life, the way he decided the way he wanted to spend that money. He made a choice. He decided the kind of life he wanted to live. Now, the, peop, the young man of age, his age at that time <clears throat> thought this guy is having a good time. He's got so much money. He's enjoying himself. But he was being wicked. He was living a wicked life. And our memory verse today, I wanted to go to the memory verse right now, which is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 28. Our memory verse says, The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hope of the wicked come to nothing. This can be, in other words, it means that the hope of the righteous, the righteous are those people who live according to instructions from God. These people, they have joy. Their life is full of joy. But those who live a wicked life, their life comes to nothing in a very short time. Just like the prodigal son, his life came to nothing in a very short time. So, what do we do? Number one, we must be obedient. When we are given instructions, we must be obedient. Adam and Eve decided not to obey God and did what they were told not to do. Even us as children, we must decide to do the right thing. Even when our friends are doing bad things, I know there are things, there's something called peer pressure where you feel you have to do what your friends are doing. But you know the right thing. You must decide to do the right thing. If you are being given instructions, obey the instructions. Don't do the wrong thing because your friends are doing the wrong thing. Be obedient. Number two, like I said before, maybe the young men and women who saw the prodigal son, how he was living, he was driving big cars, he was having a good time, getting drunk, he had so many things that people desire. <clears throat> and they envied him. They said, 
I wish I could be like him. I wish I could dress like him. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. But what he was doing was wicked. So do not envy those people who are wicked. Always do the right thing. Do not envy the wicked. Because as our memory verse has told us, the happiness of those who do wicked things comes to nothing. And it is only for a short time. They are happy for only for a short time. So we as children, we must be obedient. We must not envy those people who are doing bad things. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 18, the righteous have joy now and forever. So we must decide to live a righteous life, a life that is pleasing to God. <clears throat> and remember, God has made us in a way that we can make a decision. God did not create robots that is sitting somewhere with a remote control and directing what, what we shall do. He has given us a mind which is able to make decisions. So remember, God made us so that we can have a good fellowship with him. God made us with minds that can make decisions. God desires that we will be obedient and we should not envy those who are wicked. Once again, our memory verse. Proverbs 10, verse 28. This prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. So boys and girls, that's our lesson for today. Remember to be obedient and your life will be full of joy. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us that you have made us with a mind that can make decisions. Help us, Lord, to always make the right decision, not to be influenced by our friends or by anybody else, but to do what we have been told and to obey you at all times. We thank you, Lord, because you have promised to be always with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. See you next time.